Hey, hey, what's up everybody? It's George here and we're back with another video. Now today's video is video number two in the Goblin 500 electronic setup series. In video number one, we went over the AR7200's indicator lights. We talked about the menus, the parameters menu, and the setup menu. We went into the setup menu and we set the first parameter and now we're ready to continue on. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at today's setup. First I have, of course, the book open to the right page. I have a pen in case I need to take any notes. I have my Spectrum DX8 and the Goblin 500, and that's pretty much all I need. Now, getting ready to start uh, today's video, I looked and I saw that I was going to need the frequency of the cyclic servos. Well, no problem, I kept the original packaging. Here it is right here. And unfortunately, nowhere on the original packaging does it tell the frequency. I figured I'd need it for the tail servo as well. I looked and I couldn't find it there. I went on to the user group. I checked the number of posts and a couple people had some different ideas. But I finally found a great website that shows what the settings for a number of the most popular servos. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, post a link to that down in the comments. Moving forward, let's go ahead and put the camera on the tripod and start getting right through the rest of the setup. Okay, we're ready to move on with the setup, but before I do, I just want to take a quick second uh, shout out to Crisis Point Man for all his help uh, in understanding these parameters. Thanks bud, you rock. Alright, so let's get back into the setup. If you recall, to enter the setup menu, we press and we hold the button until the A LED becomes solid, and then we release. Now we're in setup mode. We're on setup position A, and if you recall, setup position A was the mounting orientation, and we set that to horizontal, which is blue, and the indicator shows that. To move on to the next parameter, we push the setup button one time, and that takes us to parameter B. Parameter B is the swash plate servo frequency. Now you can see the default is purple, which is 50 hertz. If you don't know what your servo frequency is, use the default. Uh, if you recall, this is the one I looked up on the internet on BSTEC site, and I found that for the DS3717HV servos, that the frequency was 200 hertz. 200 hertz is blue solid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the rudder stick and change that purple to blue solid. Now it's set to blue solid. To store this setting, all we need to do is push the setup button once to go to the next menu, and now that setting has been saved. Now we're indicating that we're on position C, which is the tail servo center position pulse length. Um, we can see that it's set at the default, which is blue, and that's 15. 20 microseconds. Now 1520 microseconds works on most servos, but I looked it up on mine and mine works at 760 microseconds and that's red solid. So once again I'm going to use the rudder stick and I'm going to change that blue to red. And to save that setting I'm just going to move on to the next parameter by pushing the setup button. Okay, now we're on setting D, which is the tail servo frequency. Uh, you can see it's set for the default, which is purple, 50 hertz. And once again, if you don't know what the tail servo frequency is, then leave it at 50 hertz. But if you do have the information available and it's something different, go ahead and set it. Once again, I went to the website and I found that my tail servo frequency runs at 560 hertz or blue solid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the rudder stick and set it to blue solid. I have it at blue solid to store that setting. I push the setup button and move on to the next parameter. Now we're on menu setting E, which is setting the tail servo endpoints. To enter this menu, you move your rudder stick in the direction of the endpoint that you want to set. It's really arbitrary. I'm going to go ahead and choose left. What I'll do is I'll move my rudder to the left until the linkage binds and then back it off just a little bit and I'll wait. The light will blink and then become solid, indicating I can go to the opposite direction and set the other end point. I'll do the same thing in the other direction and when I'm set, I'll leave it set 
and the light will turn purple indicating that it saved that endpoint. Let's go ahead and do it. I'll first start, start by um, moving uh, my rudder stick to the extents and then back it off just a little bit and wait. When the light becomes solid, I can go in the other direction. I'll move it in the other direction until it binds. Back it off just a little bit. Wait. And the light will turn purple. Indicating it saved that setting. Now to, to save that parameter, we'll just use the menu button to move down to the next parameter. Okay, so this looks like a good place to break for right now. We've gotten a lot accomplished. Look for the next Goblin 500 electronic setup video coming soon, where we continue going through the parameters of the AR7200BX. Thanks for watching, and as always, happy flying, friends!